The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Bentoria.com. That's B-E-N-T-O-R-I-A dot com. And a very warm welcome to the Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm Lord Hillsborough, and with me on the line this evening, first of all, we have James. Hello there, James, your boy. Hello. I would like to thank you very much, your being. You have kept my seat lovely and toasty warm whilst I've been away. Thank you so much, your boy. No, that's an absolute pleasure. It's a very nice throne that you have. Well, I've been told that before. Um, Victoria, my darling, you're with us too. How the devil are you, sweet pie? I am, my lord. I'm all right, thank you. You're always all right, my darling. Always <laughs> all right. And, of course, we've got Mr. Eduardo. Hello there, Eddie old bean. Hey, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good. I would call her. I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a cat and, and that. Evening. <laughs> Good song, that. Good song. <laughs> awesome. It's a good song. I think very, very underrated as nineties kind of rap esque songs go. Skeeler was a bit of a whiz. <laughs> Do you think that's the kind of song that Fessy used to start sing to himself when he was doing his little Fessy skills as a boy? <laughs> no, I never. I'd never, I'd never seen an interview or heard an interview with Fessy until um, last weekend after the Huddersfield match because I had it in my head that he spoke absolutely perfect flowing English and he doesn't at all, does he? Well, what I'd like to see is uh, both Fessy and Skilo in the same room, because I've never seen that happen. No. So, you know, <laughs> they could be. They could be the same thing. Can I just point out while we're calling him Fessy, I heard last night that apparently that means idiot in Italian, where he grew up, and he's Uh-oh. really offended by it. <laughs> I don't I, know but, if that's uh, true. I'm going to research that while we're talking. I'll research. Okay. You carry on. We're, we're, we're straight into Owl's Talk territory here, because there are ongoing conversations about this on Owl's Talk, and it's a bit of an in-joke, because he is actually Argentinian, not that's Italian. That's what I said, but someone said he grew up in Italy. Apparently so. His parents are both Italian or something. I don't oh. know. Well, I think those on our socks are just a big bunch of fesses. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, so let's crack on. Um, of course, we've got a rather exciting show this evening. Uh, but before we get to the exciting part, let's have a chat about the matches we've played, shall we? Um, first of all, Huddersfield Town. Uh, again, Yorkshire Derby and all that kind of thing. And again, this first half business is getting a bit silly now. It was a little bit pants, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know, was it? I, can't, I honestly cannot. It seems like an age ago. <laughs> oh, James! It, no, I, I mean, start giving you just placebos before a match. Look, I can tell you about the pub. I remember that. Uh, the match, yeah, <laughs> bit of a distant, bit of a distant memory. Uh, um, yeah, I can't. I mean, it was it was what it needed to be. We won the game. It was a good team performance. Um, I, I thought that we played it around quite nicely at times. I think you're probably right that maybe first half wasn't amazing. Um, and you know, second half was probably better. Some players that looked really, really good. I thought Lopez had a really good game. Thought Bennett had a good game. Fessy had a brilliant game as he always does. Um, and then Carlos pulls his rabbit out of the hat, doesn't he? And he makes his two substitutions. Uh, and once again, he changes the game. And I'm beginning to think that um, we probably don't give Carlos the credit he deserves for being clearly the biggest tactical genius in the country when it comes to football because he just knows exactly what to do at, at, at the right time um, and yeah did it again Atty and Zhao combine and set up the winner how the, one of the things that always interests me about Carlos's post-match interviews is that he has never ever given a, a cliche in an answer he's never ever talked about a game of two halves or um you know, being as being as sick as a parrot, or uh, he taking can barely speak English. He no, can't I know, use but, 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 he, no, he, but he doesn't. He doesn't even stumblingly try to approximate those, does he? Um, the, the closest you get is him talking about we are in good place. Um, but what he always does is gives a really in-depth tactical analysis of his high-level plan for the game. And actually, I think that's because 
he's one of the few managers who actually understands how a substitution can affect the game. And he does it almost without fail. When Carlos changes things. It doesn't just go, well, you know what, I've, um, I've got a central midfielder that looks a bit tired, I'm just going to replace him with another central midfielder. He changes the player and then changes the system to, to accommodate the player that he's brought on. And that has been the hallmark of virtually every substitution that he has made when we're chasing the game. It's always a substitution for more reason than, oh, we'll just throw someone on and see what happens. Um, and, and, you know, and Huddersfield was the absolute perfect encapsulation of that because it wasn't just the bringing on of the impact sub. It was changing the way that we played that, that brought rewards. It, it was a tight game, wasn't it? Um, and um, I, I said all way, uh, all way through the first half and all way through half time and probably most of the second half as well. I said, this is a nil nil draw all day long. We could play till nine o'clock. Two teams that are cancelling each other out. There were very few clear-cut chances, very few shots on target. Um, I would have put my mortgage, if I had one, on it being a nil-nil draw. Um, and I didn't see the goal coming at all. I just thought, this is just one of those games. It, we, we could play all day long. doesn't make any difference. Um, you know, that's the sort of... When you win games like that, you know that you are doing something right. Um, having said all this, I don't know what you guys think, but they, they should have had a penalty, shouldn't they? That was nailed on handball by Kieran Lee on the that line. Was, it, was, it was a blatant penalty, wasn't it? But it's one of those things, again, this season that I feel a bit guilty about because we moan so much when something doesn't go our way that we f I feel like we just need to kind of gloss over stuff that shouldn't have gone our way. Um, but yeah, definite, definite penalty. It was like playing basketball. It could have been an Eddie's song. Yeah, cause, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I mean, we've we've had us we've had us um, spell of bad luck, and you know we're just now getting a few decisions going in our favour. And the old saying is that it levels itself out over the course of a season, and you know maybe that's what it is doing. The goal as well. I've got a bone to pick with the Sheffield Wednesday team. I actually choked for about two minutes because I was eating a salmon sandwich just as that goal went in. I'd done the same as James. I thought, well, this ain't going to happen. I was listening to it on wireless. And I thought, right, I'm going to make myself a sandwich. And, you know, I'm, I'm a bit, it was John West salmon, obviously. And I'm funny about salmon because I don't like the spine. So I'd bought myself a nice little tin and I thought I'm going to make myself a sandwich. And I choked on it and lost the whole lot. Well, it's just not on, Victoria. How dare it's they not. go around scoring goals whilst you're eating salmon? <laughs> exactly. John I am. Um... When, when the goal went in, I went in for a, a hug with the guy who was stood next to me, who was a stranger. He wasn't anyone that I was with. Um, and he uh, he turned me down. He refused to hug me. <laughs> Your day was worse than mine. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, boy, James. I'd hug you, James. I'll be in any it was, it was a funny it... old day because it's a funny old place, Huddersfield, as well. We um, After getting off the train, we only made it to the first pub, which is actually built into the train station. And we didn't make it beyond there. We went straight to the ground from, um, from there in the end. Uh, there was a guy in wearing a brilliant Hawaiian T-shirt that would have not looked out of place at Honol Honolulu Wednesday day the day before but this was just a guy from Huddersfield that was out for a pint in the middle of the day uh, in fact I got a photo of him which I will I will post a photo of him in a short while so you can have a look he was um, he was it. Um, and the thing, the thing that I was most proud of is that this this pub sold some like weird and wonderful beers, and they had a, a beer in the fridge. And this is I, I posted a, a tweet a photo of it on Saturday, so if you want to have a look at it. This beer was called Double Bastard. That was the wow. name of the beer, <laughs> and it was fifteen pounds a bottle, fifteen, 15 quid a bottle for this beer. A bottle. Yeah, and normally I'd just be like, ah, oh, sod it, I want to try it. And I managed to resist. I didn't buy the bottle of Double Bastard, so I'm very proud of myself for that. Uh, you know what? You you think you had a bad day. When we scored, I went to hug a salmon and got rejected. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> if you get pushed out the way by a big grizzly bear. Cup, <laughs> <laughs> I did. Who would have thought it? I was just fishing in a stream. What the chances? <laughs> Like you do, uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, like you say, I mean, it, it, it's good that we 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 can now sort of grind out these results. It's all well and good playing this lovely, beautiful, smashing football and things like that, but it, that momentum is is taking us. And again, it will come onto Blackburn game in a second or two, of course. But it, it, it's lovely that we can do that now, isn't it? Because it used to be something we struggle with really, really badly. Yeah, I mean, I think that we, um, it's kind of built into us as, as Wednesday fans, isn't it? That we sort of expect the worst. And we're used to, you know, the fact that we're, 
we're in sixth place in the league. Oh, we're still going to mess it up. It's still all going to go wrong. And Huddersfield was one of those games that we, it was on a bit of a knife edge. It, it could have all, it could have completely gone the, the wrong way for us on um, on that day. And I think maybe we, um, you know, we sort of expect that to happen. And we're quite surprised when it doesn't. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's lovely. It's weird, though. It's really weird. We're it getting is, into, don't into that. Don't be too positive, do we? It's mm. weird. You can't be. We're getting into that part of the season, aren't we, where um, where good teams win despite playing well. You know, all the way through the winter, that we were putting in great performances and winning deservedly, and we were raving about how well we were playing. And now it's almost like you know we're, we're grinding out results a little bit, and it's it's the odd goal in three or a one nil victory and that kind of thing. Um, but this is the t- the part of the season where you do that, you end up with uh, success at the uh, at the very end of the season. So hey, yeah, I was as happy as anyone that we ground that out because it it had nil nil nailed on all over it right up until the point that goal went in the net, didn't it? But that is that is like a good team form, isn't it? We need to be doing that. We need to. We can't be drawing nil nil. We can't be losing in the last minute. We've got to push on and. We've got to understand now that it is going to be dirty wins for the rest of the season, probably. Um, yeah. And that's that's the way it goes, because everyone's fighting for something, uh, whether it's just to finish a little bit higher mid-table, whether it's to avoid the drop or whether it's like we are. You know, everyone is fighting for something. So games are going to get tougher and not in a sexier way. That's that's so true. And and we're at that you know, kind of stage of the season now where everyone is talking in cliches all the time. All the cliches are coming out. But the one that, that you hear, which is so true, is that you know, when you're at this stage of the season, it doesn't matter how you win games. Performance means nothing. All that matters is getting the points now. That's all that matters. I just wonder, is it possible for us to continue to win ugly if we have Vincent Sasso and Sam Hutchison on the pitch? <laughs> <laughs> That's a there, worry. Must there be is a worry. Some wonderful hair on that pitch now, isn't there? Apart from Dave, <laughs> now he's had a cut. <laughs> So yes, all these words like dirty and grinding and and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm trying to get around the first. Oh, 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 oh. um, <laughs> just, just describe my average weekend right there. <laughs> Double bastard. Um, right then, ladies, so let's crack on. And of course, the next game that popped along in quick succession was the Blackburn game. Now, of course, we um, Blackburn. A bit of a weird one, aren't they? I mean, they've had some cracking players. They've got rid of some cracking players as well. Obviously, Rose has gone, etc., etc. Uh, ben Marshall, who is at Blackburn, who we coveted for quite some time over there as well. We would have loved him as a Wednesday player. Um, after watching that, do you think that's still something we'd fancy? Or do you think we might be sort of over the Marshall now? He was playing a very odd game for the first 20, 30 minutes. I couldn't really understand what he was meant to be doing. He was at right back, but yet... He seemed to be playing all over the place, but not in the typical way that we remember, uh, like Ben Marshall playing. Um, we, you know, when we had him, we could have stuck him literally anywhere on the pitch. We could have put him in goal, and he'd have still done something. Whereas last night, he just seemed very confusing. I don't know if they had injury problems or whatever, or if that's where he has been playing. Um, Par- but he just apparently, didn't look he's been himself. playing there all season. Has he? He spent all season at right back, which I find astonishing. When yeah, they're, I mean, they 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 were. Fairly poor coming forward, weren't they? They didn't look like they got a, a, a lot. Now, in case in case Ben Marshall has, you know, unless he's become a, a poor player over you know, the space of two seasons, he was even when he was playing at, at Leicester, he was playing as a winger and scoring goals and creating goals. So why on earth are they playing him at right back? I just don't. I I could not get my head around that. And when my mate who I sit with said, "Oh yeah, he's, he played. He's been playing at right back all season," I was genuinely astonished because the rest of their team is bang average. Uh, maybe that's the answer, though, isn't it? Maybe it's the fact that they are now so short on resources and are so far in the mire that they're um, they're reduced to just making do with what they've got. And uh, you know what? If Ben Marshall can just about do a job as fullback, then that's one less position they have to worry about. I suppose so. I, fe- I felt a bit sorry for him because he just he looked like a shadow of his former player. He looked like he was completely shot for confidence, um, almost scared to come forward at times, no real conviction with, it, with the balls that he was putting in the box. Um, and, you know, he, he could walk on water when he played for us, couldn't he? Um, just, it was really sad to, um, to see him just not, not look like anything like the footballer that he used to be. 
You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of when uh, Paul Warhurst played for Blackburn against us. You yeah. know, having seen the, the very, very best of him, uh, to see him reduced to a, a, a utility player in a, in a struggling side was just sad to watch. Mm. But of course, the game itself, again, first half was a bit of a... Oh, wasn't it really a bit of a maybe not quite as bad, but a bit of a chess match, if you like. Um, again, Carlos doing his thing and, and and whatnot. But of course, it has to be said, Blackburn came out flying second half, and I got a little bit scared. Well, they they, they scored, didn't they? So you you've got good reason to be um, to be scared. Um, you're right about the first half. It was. Almost a bit of there were there were kind of moments where it seemed like it it was on the verge of becoming an exciting game of football, but it didn't kind of quite happen. Um, and yeah, kind of cancelled each other out a little bit. Um, I kind of got the impression in the first half that Blackburn were probably not going to be a pushover. You know, they they are a weak team, and there's there's no doubt about that. But it kind of felt like they got a bit of a game plan, and um, you know, it, it it felt like it was probably working. They were limiting us to to half chances. And, um, you know, certainly at the start of the second half, when they go out and they score the goal, then you kind of think, actually, their game plan is definitely working because they're, um, they're leading. Uh, um, and then, obviously, you know, we know what happened after that. How much do you think that, that, especially in the first half, that their game plan was obviously competent, but I almost felt like we, you know, we restricted ourselves. The number of times where, uh, where Joao had six or seven touches on the ball instead of, of driving on or trying to uh, play a ball in behind the defence. The number of times that Kieran Lee you know, got onto a ball and instead of just striking it straight away, uh, kept it and tried to create something that was a bit more intricate. It almost felt like we were trying to do too much, like we were playing inside the box or around the edges of the box in the same way that we play right in the middle of the park or in our own half, which is to stroke the ball around and probe, etc. At some point, you've, you've got to have a cutting edge, don't you? And it felt like we, we lacked that in the first half, certainly. Um, we, we're, I mean, this always happens where there are tons and tons of Sheffield Wednesday stats flying about. Uh, but the last week, there seems to have been lots and lots of people kind of doing all kinds of different stats and stuff like that. Um, and one of them was that we are, I think we're something like fourth or fifth lowest in the league in terms of actual number of shots over the course of the season. Uh, but we have, I think, the highest or the second highest conversion rate, um, which either means that we, you know, we're just not very good at creating chances or it means that we uh, we take our time and we only have a pop when we reckon we've got a, a clear sight of goal. And I think that, Kind of, I was really watching for this last night, and there does seem to be a bit of a tactic there as a as a team that unless we're pretty confident that there's a good chance of scoring with a chance, we'll just hang on to the ball. We'll keep it until we carve out that chance. Uh, you know, and we're the third highest scorers in the league. So whatever we have been doing, it's been working. But it it, it seemed to me last night, certainly in the first half, that um, we'd get the ball on the edge of the box, and instead of looking for that, you know, for that final killer pass, whether that be, you know, between the centre backs to, uh, you know, an onrushing Gary Hooper, for instance, or, um, you know, or, or, or Jack Hunt coming in from the right, it it was like we would we were trying to to get to that point where we scored so many goals this season, where the ball has been out wide, we've managed to then slide it in. And it's a, it's a first touch finish from inside the box, that kind of thing. It looked like we were only looking for that kind of goal rather than testing a keeper, which really, you know, Jason Steele is not one of the elite keepers in this league. And I, I think that we could have got after them a bit more in the first half and made it academic before we had to really work to get that result. When you look at the stats from last night, though, just to play devil's advocate, we had 17 shots last night. And that isn't bad for a 95 minute game. It'd be interesting to uh, know how many of them were after the sending off because it, it, I mean, it did change on the sending off. The, the game yeah. completely changed yeah. and it felt like we were absolutely throwing the kitchen sink at them after that. I, I, I can't confirm that for you, James. The Sky Sports app does not allow me to know those things. <laughs> Joe Cram would have known that. Not, it's not good enough. <laughs> I can tell you, however, um, one of the things that we were very, very poor on last night, and I don't know if this is a reflection of the fact that we didn't start with Ate, but aerial jewels last night, we only won 39.5% of them, which uh, I think is what? really low. Like, they got 60%. I think, so, you know what, the, the reason for that is, is 
Uh, Joao, at, at one point in the first half, I counted him uh, winning four defensive headers in a row in the space of yeah, about 30 seconds. he was seconds. like a centre-half. Seriously, <laughs> defensively, Joao put on a masterclass. I'm honestly thinking that we might move him back. If, if Leuven's injury is serious, <laughs> then you know, he could do a job there. He was absolutely unbeatable at the back. I did forget about that, actually. Those are probably the 30% that we did. <laughs> he was wonderful at that. There was like a 30-second like a, a period, wasn't yeah. there? Where he just cleared everything. One-man defence. <laughs> but no, I mean, the obviously when the, the Blackbird goal went in and, and we were all a bit, huh, but it didn't take us too long to respond, did it? Um, obviously, Mr Wallace uh, had a crack, took a... A fair old deflection. He uh, he did mention in his sort of post match he was trying to get back through to Hooper who had given him the ball in the first place. But again, it, it comes back to that little fact that that wouldn't have gone for us at the beginning of the season at all. It reflected, it deflected, it would have gone over the bar, it'd have hit somebody in the face, uh, it'd have got sued, etc., etc. But that's the thing that's really changing for us and really giving us that bit went on for the minute because things are rubbing our way, aren't they? <laughs> things are rubbing our way. Oh, stop being a dirty grinder. <laughs> well, it just sounded rude. Oh, it's all right. It's okay when I say it, but when Eddie says words like probing, that's absolutely I know, fine. I, I, I was on mute, but I did chuckle at that. <laughs> it's probing Probe. and stroking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was like, it was like watching Nigella. You know, I take it back, James. I've had one week off and this podcast has just gone mucky and I'm blaming you. So it's all my fault. I oh. uh, I take full responsibility. I you... can't remember what, what what was even was the original question. I can't remember. Uh, just that things are going our way. Little things, little decisions that used to niggle us and, 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 and deflections that used to go the wrong way on there all seem to be sort of going for us at the moment, don't they? There was a lot of luck with that equaliser. Um, firstly, because obviously it took you know the most wicked of wicked deflections. Uh, but I also thought that the keeper really should have saved it, and he just appeared to sort of like decide to sit down on the floor instead um, and and let it go in. So um, you know we uh, we we said earlier on, didn't we, about the fact that we've had our fair share of bad luck with sendings off and with things not going our way. Um, I think we certainly got a fair percentage of that back again last night just to mention the keeper though as well I mean in like injury time I think it was it injury time was it about 80 odd minutes when they had a corner and he went up for the corner mm. um and do you know like he was just he couldn't care less like strolling back he wasn't even running at full pelt after Hooper who obviously got tackled by the keeper I mean come on <laughs> I could only happen to Sheffield Wednesday, couldn't it? Even in 2016, he's got an open net and he gets tackled by the keeper who's chasing after him. But still, if you were a Blackburn fan, wouldn't you be fuming at that moment? Like They're not in a good place. You know, they need every point they can get. And he just goes and farts about in the middle of the field. I, 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 at this point, they've honestly given up on the season, haven't they? The fact that they're, whatever it was, 78 fans, or however many that turned up uh, last night, we're singing uh, "How shit must you be?" Yeah, we're winning, we're winning away, away. <laughs> for the for the first for the couple of minutes that they were uh, leading. Honestly, I, I you know they were they're at that point where they just they're just happy for some uh, uh, you know amazement, amusement, and uh, an engagement happening. So yeah, if their keeper comes out, stays in the box, and then just goes, "Ah, fuck it, I'm not even going to bother getting back." They're like, "Oh, you know what? At least we've had a go." It's no to be fair, Blackman, though, <laughs> as a Blackman fan, you've probably had that for the last 20 years, haven't they? It's always been quite an apathetic team where they're, they're either mid-table premiership, mid-table championship. There's just there's no sort of in-between with them. They've just they've always just been a very meh yeah. sort Yeah, of or, or, or Premier League champions. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was that. <laughs> that, was, that was a slight glitch in the Matrix there. But other than that, they have been very meh. And their attitude last night was very much like that. The players and the fans. They've got they've got problems, haven't they? Because they uh, all right, they've got nothing to play for. But you would think that you know they've got a, a new manager in this season. Who I mean, I can't stand the guy. I really can't. I find him the single most boring person when he speaks that I've ever ever heard. And imagine he must be the most uninspiring of actual managers. But he's got a decent record. There is certainly a pedigree there. Those players must have been playing for contracts last night. There'll be some of them that are out of contract this summer. Um, and, yeah, it was poor, I thought. Really poor from them. Do you know, looking at him, though, hasn't he aged in the last few years? 
Well, he no, didn't have like he didn't have grey hair, did he? Before he no. went to uh, I mean, was Villa, it, was he at Norwich before? Mm. Was it Norwich? And he didn't look as old as he does now. <laughs> he's like suddenly it's like being prime minister or president. He's just suddenly aged like that's, overnight. That's what Aston Villa does to you. Yeah, well, you either <laughs> yeah you either go grey or you end up on the shisha pipe. <laughs> Oh no. Jeeves, we're going to need some more equipment. Then you need to speak to Oddballs, a speciality. What the? Oddballs, a speciality dealing steel, food, and engineering equipment. Where's that voice coming from? We offer great deals on all types of equipment and can include dismantling, delivery, and erection anywhere in the world. Did he just say erection? We can also buy your surplus equipment or sell it on commission. With over 30 years' experience, let us achieve the best deal for you. Where can I find out more of Voice in the Sky? Go to www.bentoria.com You heard him, folks. Jeeves, get a broom. Um, right then, ladies and gents, so I like to class myself as a pretty big Wednesday, as do, of course, Eddie Vicks and James as well, but... I mean, in comparison to some Wednesdayites, we are just absolutely nothing. Speaking of which, we've only going to got your lucky folks, Tango. Hello there, Tango boy. How the devil are you? Hey, yo, not so bad at all, thank you. First of all, thanks ever so much for joining us, my old mate. It's an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Not a problem any time. So, really, we just want to have a little chat, because, obviously, let's not beat about the bush here. You are somewhat of a Wednesday legend, old boy, aren't you? It really is that simple. Um, you've been knocking around the club a lot longer than anybody that's ever played for the club has, so um, your name is synonymous with Sheffield Wednesday. Again, it's been going about some time, so obviously the, the, the shirt off incident, if you like, when that first started, what was that, back in 91, in the Run Blows Cup run? Yeah, it was 91 at the baseball ground, the old baseball ground. I went there, it was obviously a cold night and ripped it off. <laughs> any, any particular reason you decided to do that, or just put Japes and Tom Fullery? No, it was, it was with me uh, father-in-law, and he was about moaning about how cold it was, so I basically just took my jacket off, give him that, he said he was still cold, so I just gave him his shirt, and he went from there, really. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't John Hart's wonder goal that night that sort of shot the shirt off your back, anything at all like that? Well, he, he could have done it, so it was a fantastic goal that night, I <laughs> well, yeah, great night. Great like, night. The actual name Tango itself, it... it it didn't come from the Wednesday fans. Am I right in saying it came from Palace fans? Is that right? Yeah, it came from Crystal Palace. I was with the, a lad that was with me at the match and I was obviously singing you fat body, body, blow. There's the singing to you. I says, uh, and obviously I won't carry as much weight then. I says, uh, well, now I'm still singing to you. So I whipped my shirt off and they all started singing tango and it's gone from there, really. <laughs> How, you know what? How funny is it now that there's kids that are coming to Wednesday matches who don't understand why the Palace fans started singing tango at you? They've never, they've never seen that advert. They've probably never even had a can of tango. But for us of a certain age, it was absolutely bang on. It, it, no, that was something that, that really made you a bit of a celebrity because everyone associated, uh, you know, you with the advert and the advert with you. That's right, yeah, it was great adverts. I mean, the adverts now, you know, nowadays are nothing like that, I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was really, real fun. That was, you know, that's what it's all about, fun. So, can I just ask the obvious question here then, Tango? Yeah, why well, don't you have a Yorkshire accent? If you're such a big owl, what's the story there? Why why Wednesday? Well, because I'm born and bred in Wolverhampton in 1979. I just went up to a match and uh, met a lot of like Wednesday nights. And it, it's gone from there since some of them are still your friends and best friends and everything. And as I say, it was just like the really infinity with the club and the people. It was, you know, it was just like the, the whole occasion and people just basically took out of my life. <laughs> Thank God, I've got to say, it is, it is it's strange talking to you with me being sober. I'm used to being, I'm one of the people that always like, hey, up Tango at half time at all the away matches. So it's quite strange for me to have this conversation sober, which is is very strange. Um, but, right, the question that I've got to ask, and this is this is probably the most important question that we're going to ask all night. How on earth do you get front row seats for every away game? How does that happen? Obviously, when you get an away season ticket, you can pick where you want to sit. And obviously, uh... I've had an away season ticket for ever and a day, so you can always pick where you want to sit. Ah, there that's we such go. It's a logical James. explanation. This, it's yeah. been it's been on my mind for years. That question. <laughs> it really has. Yeah, so there's, always, there's always a simple answer to everything you said. 
Apart from the, the fact that how on earth have you not caught hypothermia yet, Dango? I mean, the football is not known on a, on a night game for its, um, its, its joyous, lovely weather. Is there certain times that you just thought, you know what, it's chuffing and freezing here? No, I think it's quite the opposite with me, actually. Like, we, obviously, when we played in the other countries pre season, I just hate the sun. <laughs> Bring me a cold day any time, you know what I mean? I'm familiar with that, but Portugal, it absolutely kills me. When we've been to Portugal the last few years, it absolutely kills me. It, it's, it's, something, cold weather. it's something I've talked about on the podcast before, actually, because uh, uh, I always, obviously, every away game and every home game, for a fact, to be honest, you know, we see uh, uh, in all your glory, and that's, that's something that is, that is iconic, but. Um, Pre-season games, I, I often wonder whether, like, you know, the players in pre-season, you know, kind of building up their fitness for the season ahead. And in pre-season, it's a little bit slower. The players, they aren't really on the ball, but the, the aim is to get there to that first game of the season at peak performance. I'm pretty sure that some of them pre-season games, I've seen you with a T-shirt on. And it's almost like, you know, that's, that's like your, your match fitness. You know, you start off with an overcoat. <laughs> on the first day of pre-season and gradually are taking layers off. <laughs> so you're absolutely on point, ready ready for the first game of the season. If you tell me that's true, then I will die happy because that's a, a beautiful thing. Uh, not quite true. So I'll do, do a T-shirt, which always comes <laughs> off the same time every time, whether we're in Portugal, Slovenia, wherever we've been, it's always off. So obviously you've been in a season to get a long time there, Tag. 79, am I right in saying 79 you've had a season to get since? Uh, yeah, I think the first one was 1980, my first season ticket. Fantastic. So, obviously, um, you, you've seen some times at Hillsborough and, and obviously travelling away. And and from from your perspective, putting sort of this team now into sort of teams that you've seen, obviously, in the 90s and, and et cetera, et cetera, how do you think this team is faring? I mean, we've got some cracking players at the minute, haven't we? But but still, looking at it from a football perspective, are you, are you excited about this season? Are, are you looking forward? Do you think we're going to get this, this playoff spot and, and maybe even possibly, dare we dream, push for that promotion spot? Well, I think obviously the best football we've seen for a long time. We've got some good footballing players there. And as I say, you know, the whole buzz about the players, the players are interested again. The fans are getting interested again. And, you know, it is the best team I've seen for a long time. I mean, you had your Waddles, your Erstis, Teddy Curran, who I'm friends with. They were great players. And I think now we have got a team. We have got great players. And I think we can push for it. I really do. Will you get banned from any Premier League grounds? So that is the question. How will you <laughs> fare at the Emirates? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a lot of Arsenal I've got, uh, friends all over in different clubs. And I have actually been down to the Emirates uh, at Arsenal. Still going there, support club. And they're great. You know what I mean? I think people now, now, like, you know, that when I go, it is for football. I'm not. I'm now a legend. Not every fan to me is a legend. Everybody that goes to a football match is a legend. It's not just one person. It's a whole thing of everybody going to a football match. So hopefully, you know, the authorities will see a bit of sense with what I do. I think the thing is as well that people don't really see if they don't know you and they don't see you at most games. Is you're not causing any trouble. You know, it's not. There's no sort of animosity. There's no sort of fighting. You're just there to have a good time. Well, I think that's that's what football's all about. I mean. Without banter, I think I'll cause a lot of banter. I think it's better to have banter, you know, directed at one person rather than like hundreds of people. It's more controllable for everybody. And the site is just all good banter. So come on, then, Tango. Um, away from being Tango, who who is Tango? Tell tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I'm a transport transport manager at a couch company in Wolverhampton, which my friends own. Um, so I used to have my own business, but unfortunately lost that a few years ago. So I had to rebuild myself back up. So. Outside the football thing, I haven't had it smooth all the time. But as I say, I've got a good job now and an understanding boss. So that's why I never have holidays. I watch my football, work hard, play hard. That's what it's all about. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it must cost uh, it must cost a fair bob because not only do you follow uh, Wednesday around, you you follow England as well, don't you? That's right. But I think at the end of the day, I just started adding, adding things up and taking things away from what you do. You, you just wouldn't do anything in life, whereas... You know, fortunately, I can, I can, you know, basically do it. You have to budget for it, make your time up to do it. And, you know what I mean? It, it, it's not easy to do. As I say, you only get out of it what you put into it. I work seven days a week. So, you know, it's one of those where you can, you can budget for your football. And even England, if you do it right, you can do it cheap enough. 
Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it sounds like a silly thing, but the, the, the logistics of sort of getting yourself about and doing all that thing, it, you should say, it's hard work, isn't it? It's not something that, that comes easy. And I think that's a, a, something that people forget when they, when they look at the, the Tango legend, if you like, is that you're a fan, gun of the football, and, and that's about it. Now, obviously, you've sung some songs over the years there, Tango. Is there any particular chance that you miss that have sort of gone into the ether on there? Um... I don't know, I think I think football progresses and it's like the songs and everything it's like modern day to olden days to to everything else. I mean you, you can't you say that the football chant goes on forever. I mean it was like the, the old Oida days when we went to went to Holland pre season. <laughs> I was I was up in there on the boat all the way back from Utrecht. I mean great stories of making the Utrecht fans over there getting locked in their bar and ended up in their end, me and Martin and other lads from Sheffield. And we were stuck in the, you know, the Utrecht end and the Wednesday fans were next to us. So obviously, <laughs> they was playing that tune, that stuck in my mind. So that, that was always going to be a tune that's going to be, you know, always in my mind sort of thing when I bought it back up and it's on the boat on the way across. I mean, you, you seem you seem like quite a positive fan, and obviously you're you know you're the guy that even on the cold Tuesday nights you you're there at the front singing and, and shouting. Um, you know, back in the uh, in the League One days, there must have been points where even you started to lose the faith a little bit. I don't I don't think you can actually lose faith in, in what you believe in. If you believe in a in a club, you, you can't look back and think you know what I mean. You're not going to win every match like this season. We haven't won every match. You've got to be you've got to be confident that one day you're going to get back to what you was. And I think now the good old days of third division, back up first division, championship, and everything, it, it's coming good again now. I think that's part of football. If you, you know you've got to be there through the bad times as well as the good. Everybody wants to turn up for the good times, but it's the bad times that you remember. And I suppose as much as anybody else who follows Wednesday, you you know you've probably been there for the us at our very best and us at our very worst in living memory. It is a you know is a is a, an away ground that you relish going to, the one that you look forward to the most, and is the one that you would be glad if you never saw again. Um, I don't think so. I would say like going to every different football ground, like going down to Yeovil, that was you know an experience going to these new grounds, like grounds that you've never been to Wednesday. I mean, I don't think there's possibly a bad ground, you could say. It, it, it's, it's all on the day. It's, it's part about the, the, the atmosphere, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's where you go and what you make it. And I think Wednesday fans, more than most clubs, they make it their own. Everywhere we go, it's made our own. No, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we spend a lot of time on on uh, Twitter more than uh, personally. I spend a lot of time on Twitter more than on Facebook. Um, and and every every single game. It, no matter what happens every single away day, there's always fans from the opposite club saying, just look at this. And, and obviously there's, there's photos, there's bouncing and, and all that kind of thing. And and that's what Sheffield Wednesday are, were known for, obviously, back in the in the Premiership days and things like that, the, the following. And, and it's creeping back. I mean, you can't get tickets for away games and things these days. They're sold out. It's that simple. We, we're getting massive again, aren't we? Hang on. And I, I tell you what, I'm chuffing looking forward to it. I'll be, can't wait to get back in that Premiership. And then we'll Tango. show them what's what. We know that you've got to go because you've got a busy life and you're off back to work again, I think. Um, but I just want to ask one last question before we let you go. I yeah, want to know good. that the lady that got a bit of a clip round the ear the other week, is that all OK now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was all right, it was all right on the day, actually. I think she overreacted. I was getting pushed. And then, obviously, I put my hand on her back to try and stop going forward, if that makes sense to you. And it, it was like, because it was me, I think she took a bit of a... You know what I mean? Give me a bit of a mouthful, but never mind. You get that all the time. <laughs> we did. We did thoroughly enjoy that. We discussed that at great length on the podcast, and we all were on your side. <laughs> Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Ladies and gents, Tango, everybody. Tango, Tango, Tango. 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 <laughs> all Wednesday, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, every yeah, time. Oh, Thank cheers, you so Tango. Much. Thanks ever so much, mate. Okay, all the best. You. Thanks, Thank pal. You. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, so let's crack on, shall we? Uh, the, the, the scant little bit of Wednesday news we have. Uh, of course, you chaps and chapettes discussed it last week, but uh, Fessy had again been nominated for the uh, PFA Player of the Month Award, um, or Man of the Month, as I'm sure James would prefer. Thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> of course, uh, it just goes out saying these days, isn't it? We got nominated for something, and Fessy wins the PFA Player of the Year again. 
It, it, I mean, we are seriously taking the piss with this one, aren't we? We really are. As we said last week, uh, he basically played two games through the whole month. Uh, and they were good games. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But, um, yeah, it's, it does make a bit of a mockery of that whole um, whole system. My favourite stat uh, of the week that someone um, tweeted earlier on is that we've now won the PFA Fans Player of the Month or Man of the Month award more times than Aston Villa have won this season. <laughs> Oh, poor Villa. <laughs> but no, obviously, it was discussed last weekend, and I apologise. I, I gutted to miss Joe. Love, love speaking to Joe. Um, by the way, one of the things that Joe said last week, which I think is a wonderful phrase that I've never heard before, is on a matchly basis. That's marvellous. Yeah. I just raised an eyebrow at that when he said that. Actually, I thought, Ooh, oh, oh my word! I wrote that down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that, Joe. Thank you so much, Alpine. But no, as, as Joe said, it, it's uh, two games. It, it really is just taking the Mickey now, isn't it? Yeah, but we'll do it. You know, while ever, while ever they keep nominating us, then we'll vote and um, we we will win. You know, it's not a bad thing. I mean, there's a reason as well, isn't there? You know, like we've said before, Sheffield Wednesday fans on the internet, I think we said this with Neil, it, mm-hmm. like from Al's talk, we are huge on the internet. There's so many of us. And let's be honest, like we come second to the Arsenal podcast on the charts. There's got to be something going on here. There's got to only be us and them online. Um, so, yeah, it's it's got to be, it is a popularity thing, but it's quite nice as well. Speaking of uh, Al's talk, just as an aside, has anybody seen their podcast recently? Do we have a tumbleweed hmm. noise that we could put in at this point? <laughs> yeah, I, no, maybe look, maybe it's on, been serving a, a three-match ban, maybe. <laughs> there, was a, there was a time not that long ago uh, when myself, Fudgy, Lord H and Beastie, uh, occasionally we bit F- bored for doing this. Who, who's that? Fudge? Um, you remember that You remember that, that French slash Spanish bloke who comes on our podcast sometimes? Uh, uh... <laughs> No. No, no you, you you may remember him more recently as a guy who does face swaps with he man toys. Oh <laughs> yes. Yes, I that know. That Boss. So Bosch. <laughs> Dennis <Yeah>. Bosch. <laughs> no, you're quite right. There was a, a time where our the Wednesday week was renamed the Wednesday whenever, so I, I apologize, I'll stop. Uh, we just we're missing you, chaps. It's 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 a shame to have you away. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to the show. Uh, of course, the next sort of bit of Wednesday news that we have for this week is that uh, Mr. Wallace, the goal scorer extraordinaire, has uh, extended his contract, so we say, for another year, but it sounds like he wants a little bit more as well. So I mean this can only be good news can't it because I'm, I'm a bit of a Wallace fan if I'm honest ever since that first game of the season watching uh, him and Hunt uh, um, d- just <laughs> destroying that we've got stop being rude again you were bloody hell have you not I did tablets <laughs> this week um, <laughs> but no I, I, I just think it, it's it's lovely to have good proper wingers back in the side again and Wallace for me is a if you like an old school proper winger He's a proper honest player as well, isn't he? You know, he plays football the right way. He he, he like he wants to get past players, but he's also intelligent enough to uh, to fit into a system. He doesn't go into business for himself. He's uh, yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic. He's probably uh, you know he doesn't get the the plaudits that that Forestieri does has done all season. He, you know, Hooper had his his spell of form. Everyone has been concentrated on really, apart from Ross Wallace, and he has been an absolute mainstay this season. So yeah, we've probably got him at his peak right now, um, and I'm hoping that we can continue that for for the next couple of years, and he can find that extra gear because he's a, a, a real key part of all the success that we've had this season so far. I've said before as well about like McGeady playing like an 18-year-old who's a little bit lost and doesn't really know what's going on. And Wallace plays like an 18-year-old, but one who's absolutely desperate to catch every single ball that comes near him. He chases everything down. And don't get me wrong, for the last few weeks, his final ball hasn't been great 100% of the time. Um, But last night, I think we saw the desperation in him again and the chance that he took that chance last night. He, you know, he really did want to prove himself and he did want to score. And I said it at half time to my mate Andy. I said, you know, he's going to come good second half. He's going to get a couple of goals. And technically, he did. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry, you've got other half time friends? Well, I've always had my friend Andy. I brought him down when, to meet you. When did this happen? Did you? Yes. Ah, See? I think 
we need to talk after this podcast, uh, young lady. I, I'm not yeah. sure I was aware of this. Oh, I'm not. Um, half, half, time, half time last night, all we got was, was John, and he spilled his pint on himself. <laughs> that happens every every week. John, I mean, it's normally on someone else, so the fact it was oh, himself is uh, a good John. thing. Um, while we're while we're talking about uh, Ross Wallace, who's obviously been our our main right winger this season, um, perhaps we could um, just reflect on the fact that a year ago, just a year ago, our main source of um, of crosses from the the right hand side would have come from a certain Mr. Chris Maguire. Um, so Ooh. let's. Let's just take in the latest episode in the Chris Maguire story from this season. After turning down the contract extension with Sheffield Wednesday that he was offered during the summer, um, he somehow found his way to Oxford United and therefore was on the losing side in the Johnston's <laughs> Trophy final on Sunday. But at least he got to play for Rotherham, didn't he? He had a nice time. Bless him. You know, like the one about doing a film about Vard- uh, JB Vardy's, like, you know, kind of rise through the leagues perhaps they could do one on chris Maguire, like the exact opposite way it'd be like your green street to your football factory wouldn't it if the jamie vardy story is called chat shit get banged the chris Maguire story is going to be called chat shit get released <laughs> <laughs> Um, another sort of little bit of not so much news, but a bit of fun. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen. Uh, Mr. Bannon was in uh, in in and amongst the Wednesday fans. I think they said in and around them, which is a phrase I hate. Um, in and amongst the Wednesday fans, um, with his um, mum and dad for the. Um, uh, friends of the show. Absolutely. Mr. and Mrs. Bannon, friends of the show. Um, for the, the Huddersfield game, which is something we've got to mention. And uh, when Wednesday scored, um, there was a, a video out there. And, and isn't it just lovely to see Mr. Mr. Bannon and Mr. Bannon Jr. just being normal, nice Wednesday fans? This is something that, that players do now, isn't it? When they're out injured, they watch the games in the stands with the fans because um, I remember Reader being sat about three rows in front of me at Nottingham Forest a, a few years ago. Oh, he was um, in front of me as well. He must have been so close. Yeah, probably for Semedo Day. Yeah, I did have a yeah. mask on though, so I would have looked like Jose Semedo. Right. Yeah, the, I probably thought you were everyone else in the um, in the away end then. Um, and yeah, we saw. I've seen a few kind of like Premier League games on the TV recently where players who are out injured, they kind of you know zoom in on them. They sat in the crowd with the uh, with the fans. So this seems to be kind of like becoming a thing. I would be if I got to the game and I was sat stood next to Barry Bannon and his parents. First, I'd be like, "All right, Mr. and Mrs. B, how are you doing?" <laughs> um, but I'd be like. I'd I'd feel quite under pressure. I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna have to behave myself. I'm stood next to Barry Bannon. You can't just turn around and go, God, they're shite or something, can you? God, bloody Scottish players. Or <laughs> no, or like, oh, Lopez is playing well. Bannon won't get his place back, will he? <laughs> I wouldn't have gone down very well. I love well. that Lopez guy. But no, it, it's just lovely, lovely to see. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting old point. Speaking of videos online, there is a video that has just popped up of Mr. Newhue, and I believe it's Mr. Sasso. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, oh it certainly is. Oh, it is. is. Oh. Newhue and Sasso in the car in their club suits prior to yesterday's match, isn't it? I must admit, my name's Victoria. I'd like to be a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is uh, one of those things where I'm sure there's lots of, uh, of the boys listening um, who... They, you know, their I doubt of, it. <laughs> well, I, there's, no, 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 not the Sheffield Wednesday boys. Just generally oh, right. the, the males who listen to our show, where for them Sheffield Wednesday is their escape from their other half, um, and that you know they go there and football is something that their their missus is not at all interested in. Um, for me, however, what football is 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 apparently uh, my chance to see men who my wife would sooner sleep with. Uh, on a regular basis. So <laughs> when she when she saw that video of Nuiu and Sasso basically doing nothing in a car, just kind of slightly bobbing to uh, to a, 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 a reggae slash ethnic based uh, R and B hit, um, she went all a bit moist. So uh, <laughs> you can't say that about your wife. <laughs> so well, it clearly happened. So thank you very much, Atty and Vincent. Um, 
But if I see you come near my wife, I will. No, actually, I won't. I'll probably say, you know what? You deserve it. <laughs> Have a go. <laughs> Go on there, lads, <laughs> for me. <laughs> Save me a job. Um, <laughs> but brilliant, absolutely love it. Um, right then, so uh, ladies and gents, I mean, last week we were treated to some of Victoria's little bits, which made a, a lovely change. Well, um, <laughs> I wouldn't call it a treat. Nobody else wants them. <laughs> but this week we are back to the original. James, I believe you've got your little bit sounds again. Never has all been. I have, yeah. I thought that Vic's little bits were a bit bigger than mine last week, which is uh, <laughs> well, a bit of an issue. I don't like to brag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. So, you know, last week um, I was talking again about this um, horrendous website, Football League World, who just spew out this this crap. Uh, we have a rival. James, have you clicked on this again? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. We, I haven't. I, honestly, I haven't. We do have a rival this week oh. for uh, for this, which is a Facebook page called Premier Football, who have released their list of the top ten footballers' legs in the game. Um, Whoa! And uh, firstly, the problem they've made is that they've only actually done nine of them, not ten of them. Which you know, when you're doing a top ten, <laughs> bit of a schoolboy error. Um, but it caught my eye that at number eight, so the eighth best legs. Not just in this country, but you know, in world football, uh, apparently oh belong to Richie Humphreys. Uh, wow! Uh, no, no, no! I'm not, I'm not sure one? what the criteria were. If but... it's Cristiano Ronaldo, then this just doesn't count because he no. Who was I number think, one? I think, I think it was. Uh, oh well, Al, well. One, yeah. Oh, got, Gary Lineker's got to be on there. All gravy legs himself. Well, gravy he's not playing legs. football anymore, is he? Uh, granted, you know, I think I think Richie Humphreys was born probably before Gary Lineker, uh, <laughs> and somehow or other he is still playing, before. isn't he? He's still playing at Chesterfield. Was Drew Talbot in the list? <laughs> <laughs> Good God, I hope not. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, and then um, the other thing is, and I, I think everyone will have seen this, and, and I love this. I think it's brilliant. Leicester's chairman bought a beer and a donut for every fan in the ground last weekend um, at the, it's not called the Walker Stadium, is it? Whatever it is, the KP Stadium last Sunday to celebrate his birthday, which I thought was really, really nice. Um, but it got me thinking, if we're promoted this season, then we're going to have a very happy chairman and the chairman's going to want to do something. So maybe we could suggest that he does a, a similar sort of thing whereby he buys... Every fan that goes to the last game of the season or the first game of next season, he buys them something. And, you know, as a responsible podcast, maybe it's our job now to discuss among ourselves and decide what it should be that he should buy for every fan <laughs> should we be promoted. I don't know when it was, but I was, I went to an away game probably about five, ten years ago, and we all got a free condom with the team's badge on. And I can't remember <laughs> who that was, but I just want to throw it out there now, Mr. Chancery. I don't need one. <laughs> I'm a very lonely old lady, so none of that. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a pragmatist here, and I know that um, Wednesday, you know, we're changing our badge, we're moving on to a, a different part of our history, etc. I think now's the time for every fan to be given one of the Milan Mandaric and Dave Jones a Sheffield Wednesday Dream Team <laughs> mugs. Yeah. There must still be literally thirty or forty thousand of those left. <laughs> So let's get those given. Now, I'll take that as a free gift in, uh, for promotion, a mug with Dave Jones and Milan Mandaric, the dream team. I was thinking more along the lines of, obviously, back in the olden days, we had the Reggie Blinker wigs, etc., etc., etc. Now, Carlos, to me, seems like a bit of a, a sexy chap, and I think that uh, if we sort of unbuttoned a few of his... Uh, tightly buttoned up shirt buttons would have a, a rather lovely hairy chest wig underneath there as well so I would personally oh. like a nice Reggie Blinker style hairy Carlos chest wig see I thought you were going to say that he should buy us all uh, a Carlos style cardigan and oh. that the entire the whole of Hillsborough oh uh, my god can you imagine is is filled with that <laughs> cardigan my, my, my other idea taking inspiration from all places uh, from Barnsley on Sunday at the playoff final, where someone actually went to Wembley with a kestrel. Um, how about 
how about, <laughs> how about he buys us all an owl, like an actual owl, so we can all sit and watch the match with our personal owl on our shoulder? Be like Harry Potter. It'd be brilliant. Absolutely. Like you could send letters across to the other stand, couldn't you? <laughs> still, no. still be quicker than the, uh, the, the, the 3G at Hillsborough, wouldn't it? Probably <laughs> <laughs> would. <laughs> yeah, that, no, just to put it out there now, Mr. Chancery, if you're going to buy us all anything, put some bloody Wi Fi in that stadium. And then that's all we want next season just a bit of Wi Fi and not the Football League Wi Fi, because I don't just want to check that app. I want to check how my bets are doing. I also, also want to check also out Red <laughs> And I think we should, um, you know, for, for fairness, we should throw this out there to anyone. Um, if you want to tweet us at TWWcast with your ideas for uh, for what our glorious leader should buy us all as a gift, should we win promotion to the Premier League? And um, we'll talk about some of the best ones next week. I tell you what, he could, he could buy us one of those TY Beanie Babies because they're going to be worth a fortune in 20 years' time. <laughs> we, could, we could all have an owl one of those. Keep yeah. the tag safe. <laughs> He could he could buy us Mares. Let's be honest, Mares and Kante. That'd do me. <laughs> that'd do that'd do nicely. The Wednesday week is proud to be associated with Cavendish Cancer Care. Cavendish is a Sheffield charity dedicated to improving the quality of life for people living with cancer. No one should face cancer alone, so Cavendish provides emotional support through counselling and complementary therapies. The services they provide are free of charge and are funded through donations. If you can help. Or would like to find out more information you can go to www.cavcare.org.uk that's c-a-v-c-a-r-e.org.uk um right then ladies and gents so let's crack on with the last little bit of this week's show and of course our upcoming fixture um we are looking forward to uh, the game against bristol of course first game of the season uh, where we first saw our wonderful new players and um yeah bristol are sort of still i suppose you could say in the relegation scrap aren't they uh 44 points just a, a few points out that way they're gonna be fighting for the lives aren't they bristol at this point and they're not doing terribly, terribly badly at the moment, are they? No, they, they drew, didn't they, on um, Tuesday night with uh, Rotherham, uh, which was actually, I mean, daft as it sounds, even though it was at their place, I think it was probably a decent point for them, that, because Rotherham have been in astonishing form. They're top of the form table at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah well, it, it, has clearly solely sold the devil to get the results, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Well, they were dead and buried, weren't they? Um, yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, Bristol City, I think, will look at the fixtures on Saturday because Rotherham play MK Dons on Saturday. So, you know, someone's got to drop points somewhere. Um, you know, you, you would you would probably say the form they're in that Rotherham are going to win at MK Dons and then it's pretty much all over, isn't it, in the relegation fight in the championship. So maybe um, Bristol City, their eye will be ever so slightly... Um, you know, off the ball, they'll not be completely focused on um, on getting the win because you know they probably probably know that they're going to do it anyway. Um, so we can we can probably take advantage of that. I think maybe a little bit flip flops on the beach sort of thing for them a little bit, yeah. Because I think that they've um, you know they've got the results. The, the last few weeks they've, they've they've got some decent results and enough that they it would take something pretty spectacular now for them to go down um you know i know you mentioned the phrase fighting for their lives which i don't think they are i think they're at a point now where it's it's very much in their own hands they can afford to lose a couple of games this season they, they probably need another couple of wins to be absolutely certain but I don't, they're not they're not at desperation stake and i think that probably plays into our hands a bit uh, yeah yeah i think um the the way that the results went last night were was very very big for um for the way that they will approach this game as much as the way that we will approach this game. Uh, it's now looking like those relegation places are not quite set in stone, but they're certainly looking uh, much more certain than they were. Uh, actually, what I'm really looking forward to on Saturday is the chance to see Richard O'Donnell, who is probably the the best player that we have produced out of our youth system in the last decade. Um in terms of uh, you know of, of what he has developed into, um, he's going to be taking the field, and uh, you know we're going to get the chance to, to see him. Um, hopefully not 
defy us too much, but he's been an absolutely fantastic player. Um, and he's got his move to Bristol City and become the starter. Uh, I actually feel like this is a game that we will probably win. I think we have too much quality for Bristol, um, but I, I don't think that this is one where um, uh, where we'll come unstuck because a team wants it more than us. I think if there's a, a potential banana skin, it's that Bristol City aren't actually as bad a team as their league position um, would suggest. But I, I'm more than happy to meet them now as opposed to maybe three weeks ago when they had their tails up after that 6-0. I think as well, it's like we were saying earlier, you know, it's the point in the season now where every game is going to be a scrap. So you can't look at league position for this. You've just got to look at both teams desperately need three points. So form goes out the window, league position goes out the window. This is all about three points. We've um, we've also got the, um, I mean, it's brilliant, but but also the dilemma of the fact that Bannon's back as well, isn't he? He's served his, um, his three matches. Just to mention the fact as well, and I know we all know this, but just to actually say the words, um, nine points from the three games that Bannon's been suspended, which I think is amazing, really, when you consider just how important he is to our team that we've Absolutely. won all three. Um but now we've got this issue of who who drops out the team now. Who who do we drop to make way for uh, for Bannon? Uh, unfortunately, I think it's going to be looking like Lopez. Although he did have a belting game on Saturday, didn't he? It's so he it's did. so He's hard been to so do. Good. Yeah, yeah, and he, he, you know he had some really good moments on Tuesday as well. From my point of view, uh, Barry Bannon is the first name on the team sheet if he's available. Um, most importantly than all of that, can I just mention that our uh, Barry Bannon song um, that we did, obviously, in conjunction with our friends over there at uh, um, the Cop End um, Facebook page, has uh, reached over 10,000 views on It's become oh. by far and away our most popular video that we've ever done, um, including any actual podcast that we've ever done as well, which is just Wonderful. freaking ridiculous, isn't it? Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, so that's going to bring an end to this week's proceedings. James, my old friend, if people want to get all of you over there on the online age, where can we do that, Holby? It's the uh, it's the usual uh, routine, so you can get me on Twitter, at James Marriott. I have, as we speak now, uh, just tweeted the picture of the very colourful man in the Hawaiian multicoloured shirt <laughs> from the pub in Huddersfield on Saturday. Also, please tweet me uh, your suggestions for what Mr. Chancery should buy us all if we get promoted. And if you are one of the very few number of fans that uh, managed to get a ticket for the Bristol City game, because we didn't have very many, then um, I will see you in Bristol on Saturday. I'm getting in a, something like 11 o'clock um, and we'll attempt to tweet whatever pub I end up in. So it'd be lovely um, to see a couple of people. Fantastic. Uh, Eddie, oh boy, where can people go to you on your lineage? Uh, so, as always, at Sausage Arms on Twitter, I am also uh, one of the lucky few, that band of brothers who will be down in Bristol this weekend. Uh, I will be wearing a grey pullover, a Hawaiian shirt with really, <laughs> really wide sleeves and a flat cap. <laughs> Uh, in honor Will you be of... carrying a newspaper and have a rose in your top pocket? Yeah, a hundred percent correct. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will be there representing uh, Huddersfield Pride. <laughs> <laughs> and Victoria, my darling, where can people get hold of you over there on the online edge? You can get me at Victoria1867 on the Twitter. And apparently on uh, various dating website apps as well. Yes, uh, that's also that's also my username <laughs> on Plenty of Fish as well. I don't know how you do one on Tinder, so just Plenty of Fish. <laughs> I've never known anyone that swipes left on so oh, many people on Tinder. She is the harshest person in the world. Must have sat and watched <laughs> you for half an hour swiping on people. I don't think you swiped right on a single person last night. No, I didn't, no. I have got one man on there who's, I don't know what his face looks like, but he has got a cockapoo. So that's quite a <laughs> wondered where the hell he's, he's going. Cool. <laughs> like, you know, honestly, that's some I sort of weird dating thing. app when they show you that. Before they show you your face, they show you covered in poo. Is plenty of fish? No, no, he's got a cockapoo. So if you what? are Adam with the cockapoo and uh, you have a nice face, <laughs> let me know. Still not helping. Bloody He's got hell. A... <laughs> I did. I did cockapoo once. I'd fallen down the toilet. <laughs> oh, I've got a springer poo. 
<laughs> I can't even. I'm dead. Oh, God. <laughs> of course, once you finish looking at Victoria's uh, various poonus, <laughs> um, you can also get over me over there on the Twitter as well at uh, Lord hsl 0 rd underscore H. You can get hold of the podcast as always at TWWcast, expertly run, may I add, by uh, Dickie Owl, of course. So you can get hold of at Dickie Owl on Twitter as well. Um, worth mentioning that Richie's been doing, again, a brilliant job over on our social medias since taking over the reins and our Facebook has now got over 2,000 likes as well. So top job, Rich. Thanks ever so much for that, old bean. Um, of course, email us. Um, do, let Ladies and gents, I cannot stress enough how much it helps if you like our, um, if you're listening on YouTube right now, just click like, that's it, simple as that. If you're listening on iTunes, just, just click that little five star review and, and if you do have a second or two, just to mention, tell Vix, Vix, I'd like to be on your list and that's all you need to put. And <laughs> trust me, she might be a little bit fussy when it comes to Tinder, but on the list, yeah. If you've got a cockapoo. Absolutely. <laughs> Get yourself on. <laughs> it's been a pleasure as always, ladies and gents. Thank you ever so much for joining us. As usual, be good, be safe. I will see you real soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good cockapoo. I really wanted a cockapoo. It's a dog. It's a cockapoo. It's a dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. Do you have any pictures of a dog? A oh, what is it? It's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dog. A <laughs> mongrel is a mixture of millions of dogs. A crossbreed is a pedigree mixture, which my baby is. It's a mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crossbreed. <laughs>